so I can't lie. This game is like complete shit. Like, really. This game is almost as shit at being a game as I am as spit. And, um, um, that's, uh, that's the entire FNAF Freddy's timeline. What the hell are you doing, Wolf? Yeah, um, I, I'm just, uh, just stalling uh, until you're, you're ready. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah, whatever. This is my show, so I'll get it on the road. The Epic Mickey games are a wild bunch, to say the least. Honestly, you have an absolute masterpiece of a game followed by a mediocre sequel that's just wanted to make big off the Oswald merch. But what if I told you that there was actually another game in this strange series? Yes, you heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, me and my fluffy companion, SansyBoy611, aka Loam, here, will be talking about Epic Mickey Power of Illusion. Now, this game isn't just a teeny tiny bit different from the other ones. And by that, I mean, it's absolute dog shit. I don't care if it's supposed to be a spiritual successor to Castle of Illusions, it's not my Mickey. And for that, it's time to get cracking. Epic Mickey Power of Illusions is released the same exact day as Epic Mickey 2, which is honestly pretty cool. And that's basically all the good things I have to say about the game. Alright, that was a lie. There's a lot of other things that are meh about this damn game. Speaking of which, the story. God, where do we even start with this? Okay, it's like the simplest, dumbest story I've ever seen in a game. Basically, the castle illusion from the Super Nintendo Mickey Mouse game of the same name gets yeeted into Wasteland, and this evil witch, um, is... whatever, let's just call her Maleficent. She takes beloved, and also non-beloved, Disney characters into Wasteland. Then Oswald calls Mickey through his frickin' television and tells him what's up. You know, apparently Minnie is like captured and like in a in a rupee or something, but I, you know, that doesn't seem right. So, you know, Mickey, he just jumps to the screen and travels to Yinsid's workshop. Oh my god. And he retrieves the magic paintbrush and makes his way for Lane Police Slam. Okay, okay, yeah. So they didn't really do anything original. This is just Epic Mickey 2 again. And it doesn't even help that Epic Mickey 2 also had a shitty plot, which, by the way, if you haven't checked out that video already, wink wink. To be fair, this is a small little 3DS game that's just trying to get into the hype of the Epic Mickey series, but when you have something as boring as this, then, I mean, come on, that's BS. Especially when the first game's plot was a masterpiece, you feel very underwhelmed, like us. We see Mean Street for like a second and that's it. Other than that, there's like no other iconic locales to even get to breathe in this fucking game. It's absolutely incredible, not the gameplay. Okay, so this game really isn't an Epic Mickey game. It's a spiritual successor to Castle of Illusion, like we stated previously. It's a 2D platform. Yep. Here we go again with that jumping fetish. In this Epic Mickey game, you run around in a castle kicking ass and getting your ass kicked, and there's plenty of flowers that can also be painted. You don't just get from point to point, however. There are side quests, just like the actual Epic Mickey games. But you know, it's not like we did them or anything. <laughs> Fuck this game, am I right? But in all seriousness, the gameplay isn't terrible or anything, it's just slow paced. Most of the bullshit comes from the level design, actually. And now, the shit that you actually do in this game, man, it is just not the same. Okay, so Mickey's moveset is fairly basic. As you can imagine, the B button would make you jump, which is very new, I'm sure. Mickey can also crouch, which is kind of interesting, but it's never utilized. However, Mickey's attacks do stay consistent from the real Epic Mickey games. Pressing the Y button will allow Mickey to become a Spinjitsu Master, the same attack that would be universally accepted by all competent people in this frickin' world to be performed in the real games by using the Wii Remote. Mickey also has access to Paint and Thinner, as we'd come to expect in these games. Pressing A will either fire a burst of paint or thinner. The trigger buttons will swap between the two. There's this mechanic involving the touchscreen, which is kinda stupid, but it's far from the worst in this game, I assure you. Basically, you'll have an object on the touchscreen, you tap on it, and you either thin away all of the paint on it, or you paint the outline of it. Thinning will have these bubbles in the tomb that, if you thin fast enough, you get some e-tickets, which is actually pretty nice. When painting, you'll receive a ra rating based on how well you trace. That will give Mickey a brief boost in all of his movement. 
allowing him to move faster, jump higher, and paint in thinner bursts will be bigger and do even more damage. It's basically like a fucking Hadouken, except with the power of art and anime on your side. Honestly, this moveset is pretty solid, and the sprites are quite good looking, with Mickey putting his heart and soul into his paintbrush swings and his spinning animation, being as Loam said, SPIN JITSU. So yeah, that's mostly all the positives, and for the rest of this, this game doesn't even have a morality system. Mickey defeats the bosses, then they just chill in their rooms. Speaking of rooms, many totally unforgotten characters in Wasteland, the world of forgotten tombs. <laughs> what was I saying? All oh, right, you can paint and find Disney characters within the levels to talk to them and recruit them, so you can get enough energy for this heart thing. That's why the side quests are ultimately end up being pretty important. And also, where I freshened up my art skills with this pretty little flower. It's so beautiful, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I know. Mmm. I just want to eat it. Wait, what was I saying? Oh yeah. This game also has sketches, which I assume there's a lot of them. But we basically only soloed the game with one, which was the people ah. The best character in the entire franchise. And then I later got this Scrooge one that I never used at all. The Worlds. Alright, so, being a 2D platformer, this game has, of course, some different worlds. Now, what worlds? I bet you're asking. Well, first of all, shut the fuck up, I'm getting to it. And second of all, take a look at this box art. As you can see, we have four worlds based off of popular Disney properties. Is what I would say if that were true. There's only three worlds, and Ursula isn't even a boss, what the fuck? So, what we have out of these three come from Peter Pan, Aladdin, and Little Murdy. No Alice in Wonderland world, as the box art would lead you to believe. However, Wonderland was actually planned for Epic Mickey 3, which is pretty neat if you ask me. Now, for the actual theming of the levels, they, they do really look nice. The first level, in particular, is actually really good looking, like there's these statues in the background of Maleficent and Pete being an absolute chad. And they actually put a lot of effort into the aesthetics of the game, but unfortunately, the actual level design is not, you know, not horrible, but, you know, could be better. Most of the levels, you know, they're, they're fine, and then the rest are absolute shit. Like this one right here, we just gave up. It completely kept us from playing any further. I know, right? Like, it was just terrible. Like, these bat bubble things? We couldn't even damn deal with that. Bats. Those goddamn bats. I know. Even the Pete Blomp couldn't save this level from being dog shit. I mean, like, again, these bats. They're, they're the bane of our He's existence. Dead. It's repetitive. Running around painting shit for the most part when it comes to the level design, which wouldn't be a problem if I actually paid attention to the bottom screen and looked for the silhouettes. In general, the sprites do indeed look nice and detailed, and the world designs aren't, well, terrible, I guess. Oh, they could use some fine tuning, though. Maybe some more development time, like Loam said. A fourth world just doesn't exist, which ultimately means... What the fuck? I didn't get my money's worth! And if you think that's bad, then boy. <laughs> the story, the mechanics, the gimmicks, the quests, the levels, the enemies, minus Alfredo and every single version of Pete, because Pete is an absolute dilf, Atlantis, the characters, the fact that Oswald has absolutely no significance in the game whatsoever, Atlantis, Jiminy Cricket, Atlantis, the ending, did I mention Atlantis yet? Obtuse, Rubber Goose, Green Moose, Squabble Juice, Giant Snake, Birthday Cake, Large Fries, Chocolate Shake, uh, hold on, I'm... I'm getting ahead of myself. Actually, real quick, I need to go off script right here. Jiminy Cricket. Let's talk about him really quickly. Why did they get rid of Gus? They just got rid of a perfectly normal character and they replaced it with this freaking Pinocchio guy. Can we at least mourn the loss of our beloved gremlin? Because that is Let's still so annoying. Let's just a moment of silence for Gus. A moment of silence Everyone. for Gus, yes please. Everyone, take your hat off and give a moment of silence. <laughs> I even even when we played the game on um camera, I was like doing a voice impression of Gus when Jiminy Cricket was talking just because I missed him. But anyways, back on topic. The climax. Now this game's ending is absolute doggy doo-doo water. And you'll see why shortly. Okay, just to hurry up and say this. 
There are three bosses in the game, which is just a bunch of butt stomping and nothing else. It's dumb and stupid. Okay, after Mickey gets enough heart energy and befriends a bunch of popular Disney characters in the world of Forgotten Tunes, it's time to go up against the top of the castle and kick Miserable's ass. It's just a dumb enemy rush followed by a boss with a dragon. It's easy and dumb and stuff. Too bad we couldn't get to this point because of how dumb the shit was before it. The ending is half-assed anyways, it's because it's just Mickey running home from Wasteland along with other Disney characters supposedly trapped in the castle, and then Minnie shows up and says that she had the exact same events in her head because she was dreaming. Bruh. In conclusion, Epic Mickey Power of Illusion was just a cash grab. It was used to build up a little more hype from the Epic Mickey series while failing miserably at the same time. See what I did there? <laughs> Doesn't help that it released the exact same day as Epic Mickey 2, which at least was kinda good. Don't even waste your time with this. I know there's a lot of sketches and upgrades that provide more playtime, but why would I play this when I could just play Epic Mickey 2? At least Oswald is relevant there. But anyways, this is Dylan 697 And Sansy Boy 611 Epic Mickey fans that aren't afraid to shit on it. Don't, Don't forget, forget to thin that, that subscribe, subscribe button. button. This entire game was merely an illusion, and so are you! Dylan, uh, I don't feel so good. Well, shit.